Welcome to the Michigan Golfer Show. Join us each week as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great game. I'm Susan Barely here with Michigan Golfer, and with me is my husband Paul Barely, and the head professional at the Thoroughbred Golf Club, um, Chris Cullen. Yeah, we're here to talk about the Thoroughbred. Paul and I, we ha we were able to uh, visit the Thoroughbred uh, last fall. We had a wonderful visit, and um, Paul, why don't you you kind of kick us off? Tell us a little bit about your impressions. Well, yeah, I played it when they first opened back, what was it, Chris, 93 maybe they opened the course? 1993. So it's getting near 25 years old now, and what a difference. You know, all the trees had, had grown in, of course, vegetation and nature is still at work up there. So I think one of the goals is to clear out some of the underbrush, get some of the trees out of the line of play. But wow, what a, what a gem. The course is just wonderful condition. We played it in early fall, great fall colors, and... The only place where you have horses that still have the right of way on the golf cart. Yeah, you can see some horse traffic when you're playing. Yeah. Well, Chris, you were there at the start of the course. This is the Arthur Hills course. Can you give us a little bit of history and tell us about the changes over the years? Uh, sure. Yeah, I was there in 93 when we first opened. And, of course, any time you get a new course, it's popular. And we were busy at that time. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to trying to get back that same business that we had in the early 90s. Okay, so now you've come back. You were there. How, how long were you gone? Uh, I was there four and a half years. Okay, so I'm in a 25-year loop, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> So coming back, you see the course is different. The growth has really changed the course. And, and what, what's, up, what's next for the course? Are you trying to restore to original? Yeah, we're trying to get it closer to the way it was when Art Hills first, you know, put it together. Uh, big thing is uh, tree work. And we're trying to get the uh, landing areas kind of expanded a little bit and the condition the way it was. I understand you um, hired a new greenskeeper, Ken Gifford. He came out of New York. Um, what does Ken bring to the course? Uh, Ken has a lot of experience and um, you know we've, I've just got to know him the last few weeks and I really look forward to working with him. Now I know that facility is amazing. I believe it's about 1,500 acres or am I wrong? Is it more than that? Uh, the, the whole ranch itself is about that. The golf course is 350 so it's and it's it's a big big place. It's a huge property, and I I guess one of the things I'd like to say is the kinds of things that are at the thoroughbred are amazing. It has a back forty. the The property itself, the Double J Ranch, is what that's called, right? Uh, has a back forty with the Western Village. They have family campings. They have a, a ca cabins, family cabins. Uh, they have an RV park. They have log cabin accommodations, thoroughbred suites. It's an amazing property, and for kids, they have a Gold Rush water park. So I think part of the challenge with the course in the past has been there's so many and and I forgot about the horse. Yeah it used to be basically adult oriented back in the day and now it's geared towards family and uh, that's probably the biggest change. I Huge family place. I mean fabulous and if I if we still had little kids we'd be over there wouldn't we? Yeah I should also add that I, I like the fact that the winter sports are are not just your conventional cross country or downhill skiing, they're tubing and horseback riding and sleigh rides and uh, just really cool, so to speak, winter activities making that resort a year round place. I think the golf course has to compete a lot with all the other services that are going on out there. It's like a, used to be a golf course with a dude wrench, now it's a dude wrench that has a a golf course you're trying to re-recognize, right? You're exactly right. <laughs> you're exactly right. We're trying to keep up with the rest of them. <laughs> yes. Now, when we played the course, we absolutely loved it. And one of my favorite holes, visually, not necessarily the horse, the, the hole I like to play the most is number two. And I know, Paul, you had a couple comments on that, too. Well, it's just a great golf hole. I mean, it's uh, you're, a little rib on a fairway that, that comes uh, between a cranberry bog and a woodlot that... Uh, the greens some 4 and 25 yards distant. It's just from the tee, it's a very intimidating shot, but once you get off that tee and work your way to that hole, it's just a spectacular piece of uh, natural feature of the golf course. It's just a wonderful place. Chris, what are, your, some, what are some of your favorite holes on the course? Well, I, the two is spectacular to, to look at. Uh, playing, uh, it's, it's tough, just, just like you were saying. But uh, 
I, you know, a lot of the holes are kind of signature holes, so I really don't have a favorite. Um, if I was leaning towards one, I like number ten. Um, but I, five with yeah. The roller, yeah. But, well, uh, what are some of the characteristics of ten that make it a favorite for you? Uh, it's just a nice dog leg. Uh, elevation changes, and then it's a challenging. It's hard to hit it in two, and it's a challenging third shot. If so, it's. Overall, and then the green stuff. So it, it, it's a beautiful hole. Now, I felt that uh, both the, the forward tees, uh, how many tee sets you have out there? You have four or five? Yeah, there's four. There's four sets of tees. And that each of them really present a nice opportunity for golfers, um, that there's challenge at every one. And um, generally, what, are, what kind of reactions do you get from people who play the course? Well, if, if you get couples that come out, um, it's probably a little more women friendly than for the guys. So the ladies are usually happy. Um, but uh, you can go from any, any tee, it's a nice challenge. Now, were you there when uh, Art Hills came out to take a look at the course recently? He was just there in the fall, or was that? Was you were probably somewhere south and warm. <laughs> but I understand that he was out uh, to the course, came out for, uh, to take a look at how things were going, and, and really had a lot of recommendations, and those probably have, have come your way into Ken as well. Well, and it's, it's always been one of his favorites. I mean, if, if you talk to him about his courses, he'll mention thoroughbred. Um, it's just one, and he's did 400 or so. And then he moved up the uh, coast a little bit to uh, thoroughbred. Yeah, the thoroughbred. At, at the old Jack and Jill uh, dude ranch. Yeah. Uh, that, that was owned at the time that we got hooked up with him by a couple from Detroit. Right. And uh, I went up there. I guess it must have been in early December, and I uh, met with them, and I went out and walked around the golf course, or walked around the property, yep. and the golf course just fell in place. I, mean, I think I designed that whole golf course within three hours. I mean, at least the rooting. I mean, not the details yep. of the greens and everything, but the rooting, everything just fell in place. Uh, yeah, that was a. Uh, and then you said, "Oh, and then you said, oh, let's leave that big mound there. So, give them a little challenge to how are they going to play play this hole, that's right?" Very, very, <laughs> that's a right. very, very. That's yeah. Well, we're really impressed with the course, particularly because uh, Norm Halbauer and his wife have really just taken on this this course and really are are really enthusiastic about bringing the golf part of that the double j resort back and getting people out there and i would say as a destination it's a fabulous destination and uh, it seems like it's a, just a course people will love to play for several days and just get more and more out of it each time which i would and uh, you know we're only six miles away from lake michigan so we're, you can take advantage of that when you're over too yeah um, one other quick thing I want to mention is that the Double J is the home of the uh, Electric Forest, and uh, that was probably came after your time at the course. Uh, a lot of people who know that resort know it for its its uh, weekend music festival, and uh, the Double J Resort has a uh, a huge stand of trees. You probably know what kind of trees they are. Uh, they're some type of pine tree, Susan. <laughs> probably red pine, and the pinus resinosa. I'm guessing. <laughs> anyway, uh, I know that the the resort keeps some of the uh, structures for that festival up because it's a it's an annual event. This year it's going to be two weekends. It brings about forty thousand people to the resort. These are not golfers usually, are they? No. <laughs> but it it does put uh, Double J on the map. So we were we we're more than happy to get the golf back on the map. And um, Paul, is there anything else you want to say about the course? Well, the course itself, I, I think it just has so much variety. I love the fact that you know, all the par fives are different, all the par threes are differing lengths, and uh, a lot of elevation changes that are quite dramatic and really make the course that much more special. It's like you're way up north in Gaylord or someplace, and you're, you're south of Silver Lake still, right? Technically, south of Ludington. Okay, well this has been wonderful talking with you and um, we really look forward. Oh, one quick question I have for you is if you uh, want to play the course, you don't have to stay at the resort. You, Correct. you can come on in, just call and make tea time. Uh, we'll Alright, sounds great. Well, we're here with Chris Cullen, head professional at the Thoroughbred Golf Club, and Paul Barely, and it's been great talking with you both. Thank you.